Recently, I've inherited a project with the very old code base. And when I say old, I mean 2017, because that's like 1920 in web development years. I did find it quite challenging to work with. So I decided to do something about it and do some refactoring. And I really like that project because it's high visibility website, Fortune 500 company. Our team is amazing. The client is amazing. They're open to dialogue. They like to hear our suggestions. There's a lot of ownership on the project, a lot of responsibility. So basically everything you want as a front ender. The problem is a lot of engineers touched that project since 2017 and all of them sort of pulled it in a lot of different directions because unfortunately none of them had enough time to like actually spend time with it and establish a system in CSS. So let me give you a few examples. Some components in CSS use pixels for setting dimensions and font sizes, and some use RAMs. The base font size was set to 62.5%, which means that one RAM equals 10 pixels. We talked about this on this channel, and actually this particular project prompted me to create that video. This started to become an issue because we have custom components on the front end that rely on one RAM being 10 pixels. This project also uses WYSIWYG editor, meaning that you create create pages in the editor and they should look the same as on the front end. But because the editor itself did not redeclare really the root font size to 10 pixels, means that we cannot reuse the styles from the front end as is and need to like update them to redeclare the values in CSS. And no, we cannot redeclare the editor font size to 10 pixels because there are styles outside of the content area that rely on one RAM being 16 pixels. So as you can see, it was not ideal case scenario. On top of that, there were some styles written in SAS, SCSS syntax, with variables declared with SCSS syntax. And some styles were written in vanilla CSS where we had custom CSS properties. I could see how that could have happened where an engineer would start refactoring but left it unfinished because he was pulled from the project or something else happened. At the end of the day, we had two different implementations for the same thing. So imagine you get a project like that. It's very easy to start thinking like, what the hell is this? Like this project sucks. But that's a very unproductive thought simply because you don't know the circumstances of other engineers who worked on this project. A better question you can ask yourself when you get a project like that is what can I do to make this project project more enjoyable for myself and for other engineers. I know that's easier said than done, but I do try to follow my own advice as much as I can. So I asked myself that question and uh, two lowest hanging fruits I could identify to move it much further in terms of maintainability and joy of working on this project. So the first one was refactoring the base font size on the front end to 16 pixels so we can start reusing the styles in the editor and then refactoring the entire code base to use one system of variables. Both of these tasks are not really complicated in nature. In case of variables, I would just need to create a version of a SAS variable as a CSS custom property. But the problem is there were so many of them. Look at this. This is just a tiny fraction of all the variables I found in that project. If I did that manually, I would need to search and replace every single one of them. Imagine how much time it would take me. I know what you might be thinking. You don't need to have this many variables if you're following a good design system. You don't need to have a variable for 27, 26, 25 pixels and so on. And I agree with you, probably not the best to have this many variables because um, it defeats the purpose. But I also thought that I would tackle that challenge later. I would just bring all the variables under one system and then I'll tackle other challenges later. I decided to refactor them into CSS custom properties because CSS is developing really well. And the more and more we work with CSS, the, the more I understand that we don't really need all the features that SAS has to offer. For the second goal, refactoring the base font size from 10 pixels to 16 pixels. That's even more challenging because imagine what exactly I would need to search and replace. I would need to search for string rem, find every single value before it, do a calculation and do that for every single value. And quick search in the code base revealed that I have 600 59 matches in 86 files. That would take me forever. I don't have that much time. I only had like one day to work on this whole. So I thought to myself, how can I automate this? How can I make this faster? If only I had a script of some kind that could do this for me. And then I was like, why don't 
I use AI for this. It's supposed to replace me in a few years, right? Why don't I take advantage of that? I decided to tackle variables task first. So I went to ChatGPT and I won't share the entire conversation first because it's long and it's quite boring because there was a lot of back and forth, but this was the prompt that I uh, sent it. I have a project that is very old and written in SCSS. I want to create a script to refactor it to use CSS instead. It has many files, but I'm only interested in refactoring SCSS files. It has spacing variable defined in it like this. I need to find every instance of each variable and replace it with native CSS custom properties. So for example, BXS size 4 becomes variable spacing 4. I have already created corresponding CSS properties and language of the script doesn't matter as long as I can run it locally on my Mac. The script must handle edge cases correctly. For example, searching for BXS size 4 will also match BXS size 40 and BXS size 48. So we need to avoid this. And after a few rounds of back and forth, I had my script. Basically, it was a single Python file that I could put in my project and run from the terminal like this. And it was very easy to check if it was doing a good job or not by running git diff so you could see like what it changed exactly. I manually checked a few instances and did the tests and it all worked fine. And for RAM calculations, I followed a very similar approach. Here is what the prompt looked like. Last challenge for today. I need to convert the RAM values in the code base from 10 pixel based to 16 pixel base. So for example, one RAM becomes 0.625 RAM. We should convert both native and positive values. So that was uh, in cases where you define negative margins or negative paddings and stuff like that. We should avoid edge cases where RAM could be part of the class name or part of another string. So basically the script scanned the entire code base, found instances where values were declared using RAMs, recalculated them to be 16 pixel based and made the change. I ran the script locally on a separate git branch and ran git diff and I could verify that it's actually working correctly. Yeah, it was not working perfectly from the very beginning. First, it had some issues with canning the files recursively. So like it would just scan the, the top level files. Then it didn't round the number. So like I would get 10.00 as a value and like that's like you don't need that you need to round numbers and also like there was some miscalculations at some point but after a few rounds of back and forth again i was able to refactor the entire code base and it only took me I don't know, like with all the back and forth with everything, probably around two or three hours to complete both tasks. And a huge disclaimer here, never do things like this in production where you have no way to go back to the previous state of the project. In my case, I ran it on my local test environment in a separate Git branch. Even if everything failed, even if it deleted the entire thing, it would be still possible for me to go back to the previous state very easily. So why did I decide to share this case study with you? I think it's interesting for a few reasons. First of all, I was able to accomplish a lot in just three hours. I cannot give you the exact number of hours I saved, but if I were to guess, it's probably 10 or 15 or even 20, because imagine how much manual monkey work I would have to do searching, calculating, replacing. I would make a lot of mistakes as well. I would get tired, my attention would wither. So using AI for cases like this, it's like having your own tireless helper that's always there to help you if you give it right instruction. The second takeaway, I think this task, this particular task, even though I've been using GitHub Copilot and ChatGPT for quite a while now, gave me a glimpse of what programming could be in the future. Because think about it, I don't know Python good enough to write programs in it. I'm a front-ender. My main language is JavaScript. I do understand logic though. I can read Python. I can understand if it's doing what I want it to do. So in this sense, AI enables me to do more. I was able to program in English and not in Python. So this is something to ponder about. I think we'll be programming more in natural language rather than writing programs ourselves. But put me on non-web project and I will still struggle and be very slow even with all the help from AI. And also I cannot imagine, let's say my sister who is a writer to accomplish this exact same thing that I did in two hours in the same time frame. So I guess the main takeaway here is that AI does not replace the need for deep understanding of the web platform. I think it acts 
as an amplifier of your skills. So if you're highly proficient in something, you can become way more productive with the help of AI. And if you're a junior, you'll still be able to do more, but it also means that it's still worth investing in understanding how web works and learning deeply how HTML, CSS, JavaScript work. And lastly, ignoring AI can be dangerous because you can simply miss out on the opportunities to be more productive. But overall, this was a pretty amazing experience to be able to refactor so much in such short period of time. If you did something similar, if you used AI in creative ways and would like to share, please let me know in the comments. Or alternatively, if you think I wasted some time and there was an easier way to do this, also please let me know. This way we can learn and uh, grow together and I'll see you in the next one.